Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another weekly forecast for the month of September 17th to the 21st, 2018. Uh, going to be going through a couple of Forex pairs here on the week, and um, I want to discuss crude oil quickly, and then I'll be back tomorrow uh, to do another quick one on uh, some commodities and some more in-depth Forex going into Tuesday's trading. So, uh, I'm going to make this one kind of short and sweet. I'm just going to pull up the economic calendar very quickly. Um, we've got some medium impact news landing for the Euro, Canadian dollar, and US dollar, and then some Australian dollar monetary policy meeting minutes. So we should see the Australian dollar uh, tomorrow uh, towards the uh, London Open uh, starting to move a little bit. I'll run through that real quickly as well, too. And then we've got Draghi speaking at uh, on, on Tuesday morning. We should see a little bit of volatility in here. So we could see some nice movement on here and potentially look for a setup on Tuesday. And then uh, going forward, I'm not a big yen trader, so I won't be discussing anything about the yen. But if you do have something specific you want to talk about uh, or you want me to mention, then um, just let me know. And uh, I can certainly I'll run through some of the yen pairs for you. And then on Wednesday, uh, we've got some more yen news, followed by lots of pound sterling news here. We've got uh, CPI numbers, PPI numbers, RPI numbers, and every other number in between. Um, couple that with uh, member um, Hedane, uh, Haldane speaking. So we could see some bouncing and movement as well, too, on the... Um, on the cable so I'll see what we've got on tap for that and then again uh, we've got sort of a later morning run on the Euro USD with uh, Draghi speaking again so he speaks on Monday he speaks on Tuesday um, and so those two days for the Euro are probably going to see a little bit of volatility so just keep that in mind we could see some price fluctuations so don't be married to your positions anyway on those guys uh, for this uh, for this week so Going forward then, and then Thursday is a bit more of a quiet day, and then Friday, obviously, we have more more Euro news and lots of Canadian dollar news as well, too, uh, with CPIs and core retail sales. So, I'm thinking um, setup-wise, we'll probably have uh, a fairly good setup going into Tuesday's London Open for the Euro, uh, potentially, just depending on what Draghi is going to be saying here. Uh, and then Wednesday, we'll probably look at um, the pound uh, dollar catching up to whatever the euro put in on Tuesday uh, for Wednesday's news. And then, again, nothing much on Thursday. But uh, Friday, we could see some good movement in the Canadian dollar. So want to look up for those three setups on the week. So just run over the charts here. The U.S. dollar, uh, so just keep in mind this uh, price right here, the contract rolled over, and that's why we see this big gap down here. That was just basically a stop running down here um, in this particular broker. Uh, I'll switch over to my other broker so you can see here, um, price reacted more of a gap. Uh, we're still trading at the 94.50 level there um, on both of them, so uh, no difference there, but you can just kind of see the difference in price action between the cash price versus the futures price. So, um, yeah, there's that. And really, it just kind of went to uh, sort of solidify that so this thing is finally starting to roll over. We had a nice, and, and I had mentioned all week last week and the week before, that the 90, uh, sorry, one second, I'm just going to switch over to this one here. No, actually, you know what, for the US dollar, I'm going to keep it on this one here. Uh, 95.35 was the level that I didn't want to see price run any higher, uh, close higher, I should say, 95.35. And if you look here, all week long, that is basically exactly where price had held off each time. Uh, price slammed up into a here, failed. Um, the close on this day actually came in just a, a half a pip below 94.35. Uh, we had to run through it here and failed to close low, uh, higher than 95.35. The same on this day and this day. And then ever since then, um, price has subsequently fallen off. So uh, that was sort of the line in the sand that I wanted to see hold uh, price off at. And it did successfully. And you can see the nice big run down now that we're, uh, we're starting to get into here. So... Um, I think moving forward for this week, what I'd like to see, as you can see here, we had a nice bit of a gap down here. Um, so same trading, right? Exact same. And then price came back up um, on this chart to fill the gap in. Um, this chart has yet to do it. So I would expect that this little area of price in here will get filled up uh, going into um, Monday and Tuesday's trading. 
and I would expect price action to kind of come in and do something similar to this is, is sort of what I'm looking for just to run up close that gap we could return back to the bottom end of this consolidation level in here so you can see this how this price really consolidated in here see where a lot of these bodies uh, and, and wicks sort of uh, stopped right about this level right in here I'll put a price tag on it here at 94 95 uh, to 94 you know what, we'll just call it 94, 95. 94, 95, okay. So, I'm not interested in seeing if price wants to go any higher um, than that level right there. I'd like to see price hold that off. So, if we do get that run up uh, Monday and into Tuesday's London Open, I would hope that this level right here would, um, would repel price and act as some kind of a uh, uh, resistance level. If not, then obviously we'll be making one more push higher, try and get above those guys. But I think it's sort of, um, you know, making its uh, direction known by this little runoff right here at the end of last week. And so if we do see any um, uh, push up higher, it'll just be temporary and then price will eventually roll over. And so ultimately I'm looking though for these levels under here. They almost did it on Friday. You can see these levels right here, lots of liquidity sitting under those guys there, so I'm assuming they're going to probably be pushing down for those to sweep them, and then eventually these equal lows down here, uh, these two guys right here, one, two, those are going to get swept as well, and that comes in at about 92.75 as the low, uh, and maybe even uh, this area under here, there's a nice little area under here that I like, um, where stops are residing, that uh, we could see price ultimately push down to and this would cap off the rest of September, obviously. This wouldn't be something that would happen in a week or two. Uh, but this would be kind of, uh, you know, take out into the rest of September and maybe even in the part of October. So that's where we're heading. Now, if we look at the... I'm going to switch back over. Um, the clean chart. Okay, so switching back here. Uh, and I just want to get... Get some clean charts. This was all from last week. So same thing. We'll start with the Euro USD, go into the pound, and then uh, just real briefly on the uh, US CAD and Aussie, and then uh, I'm going to do crude oil, and I'm going to wrap this up. So same idea here. Obviously, as you can see, um, price had failed to get below these lows here on the initial push down when the US dollar um, was trying to up into here. The Euro was doing the same thing, pushing down here. Just briefly got below these two wicks right uh, under here and a big rejection and now uh, I was hoping that we would, would have seen price run up above here haven't seen that yet but I would imagine we'll probably start to see that this week and then ultimately if price pushes up high enough we'll get you know runs above subsequent runs above here as well too so um, what I'd be looking for I'm just going to drop down onto a uh, lower time frame here and I'm going to suggest uh, we may not get a deep deep run down here but you see these lows right here you see how they they came in, they created a low, they took out this, I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. So the price traded up into here, they created a low, came down, created another low, and so everyone was thinking this is artificial support, or sorry, this is support and, and price isn't going any lower here. They ran back up and all the guys who were going long dog, dog piled on this only to have price come right back down and more than likely stop them out because they probably all stuck their stop right underneath here. And that's exactly what this little guy right here is. This is a stop run. Uh, that's it. So that one was, you know, five or ten pips, and you see what they did with the price and just rammed it back up. Now, on this next run up here, so you can see subsequently so far, they've, fallen, they've failed to take last week's high out, uh, or sorry, the week prior uh, high out. And so we had a nice sell-off on Friday. What I'd like to see is if we do see price run lower than this area in here, so their lows on Friday, if price pushes lower than that, I'm going to be looking at two areas. Um, the first area is right underneath here. Um, at the at the stops underneath this low here and the second one is right here and the reason I'm looking at here is because as you can see um, price ran down stabbed down they traded back up they came down once twice three times and each time they didn't run out the lower low the only low that they ran was this guy here and under this low here so if they do want to bring price below here this will be the first area. I'll expect them to stop, but if they do want to stretch one more run down, I would expect them to kind of run down into these lows under here. So just watch that. If you guys are looking at longs or anything like that on the week, 
um, they may want to bring it all the way back down to 1150. I'm just making an even number on this one here. So I I I doubt it, but uh, just just be cognizant of this area because they they could do it. Um, just for good measure, um, stop out all the longs only for them to run up and of course take out these highs in here that I've been looking for. So we're going to be looking for longs, uh, Draghi speaking on Tuesday morning. So we're going to wait for that and then we'll see what they do. Uh, but I would expect them to start if they again, right? If if they don't take out this Friday. Uh, low right here, then we may not get any retracement at all and price could just start steamrolling back up and if that happens Then it'll just be a simple matter of watching for a retracement to come in and uh, And getting long on it and they almost kind of look like they did one right here You see how price consolidated broke out of it to the upside and then it came down one more time and expanded off of that um, I mean if again if this low here doesn't get breached So this is just keep an eye on this level here at uh, 1625 if that low doesn't get taken out uh, then they're not going to come down and take out these stops and they're just going to run this thing higher so um, just be very mindful of that pound dollar same type of idea um, caught a couple of nice trades sorry caught a nice trade on on the euro on friday on this big movement down here i got out too early um, i got in uh, on this retracement on this candle right here and i got out um, basically right when price slammed down uh, right into this candle right here at uh, 1650, I believe it was. Yeah, six. Wow, well, the 1647 or whatever. But yeah, it was it was right there. So it was a nice little trade. Uh, I think I picked up 60 or 70 pips on the day, and that's all you need for Friday. So good day. And uh, again, um, cable going back to this one here did the same type of thing on Friday. I'll zoom out a little bit here so you can see put the day dividers on and you can see the REN down here but it stopped at this old consolidation level back in here so uh, very encouraging and uh, hasn't since wanted to go back down but same as the euro if this low here on Friday gets run out um, then they may want to come back down and, uh, and and take out some of these lows under here um, I doubt it it's a little more or less likely on this chart uh, I don't know this seems a little bit more uh, bullish to me but uh, they did a stop run down here took out these lows here did a stop run back down here and took out these lows but they've one two three four have four areas where they failed to get uh, under the subsequent low ahead of it so we'll have to watch that It'd be the same type of thing as the euro if we lose this low here from Friday uh, then my eyes will go to right here and uh, and then if we lose these lows here and we don't see a rejection, then I'll be looking for these lows under here. I don't want to get that deep. But again, um, just bear that in mind. Anything could happen. And, and far, as far as targets go, um, the pound is, um, uh, is moving quite nicely. But there's areas right above here. See these highs in here? And the next one in here that I'd be interested to see if they want to have any momentum to push up into. Uh, and then ultimately, the big ones right back up in here of this big consolidation area that they never came back for since May of earlier this year. So that'll be the ultimate target. But again, that probably won't be until the end of September, early October, if they do decide to drive up there. But nice bullish action here. Friday retracement. I'm expecting for a further long continuation on cable. And I'll just be sort of watching this move right in here to see where we go into Tuesday's London Open trading. Just for the record, I'm not taking any trades or suggesting any trades until Tuesday. Um, I'll be doing a live session going into London Open, and we can discuss charts then, but just kind of give you the directional bias for the week. Canadian dollar, uh, we should be seeing the opposite of what the, uh, U or sorry, the exact same of what the U.S. dollar is doing. So if we're going to see uh, U.S. dollar uh, cascading down, we should see the uh, U.S. CAD doing the same thing. Now, all that news coming out on Friday, uh, we could have an opportunity here. So what I'd like to see... Um, I don't know if you recall, but I mentioned on the, the dollar that uh, I'd like to see price hold um, if it does see higher movement. And in this case here, 3140, uh, I don't even like going that high. I'm going to say 3135 as, uh, as sort of the upper range on this. So if we see price start to run higher, um, then I'm going to be looking for some type of a rejection in this area if we even get this run up here. Uh, I would like to see that, but um, I don't want to see it go any higher than this. If it starts going higher than that, then we're going to look at running the, the highs above this last uh, swing high pattern up in here. But I think if the U.S. dollar continues to cascade down, 
uh, it will take and, and drive the U.S. dollar along, uh, the U.S. CAD along with it. So that's sort of what I'm looking for. And in terms of targets, uh, longer term, I really like this area under here. Just a, a nice area where price came down, consolidated, failed to get lower, and then rammed back up. And they haven't come down to get any of the levels, any of the stops under here. So that's where I like to see price. Again, same type of thing. It's not going to take, uh, same type of thing as the euro and the cable. Uh, it's going to take them a little while to get down there. You know, you can see here, uh, if they do get all the way under there, let's say it goes down to 126, you know, even 127 big figure. That's 400 and, you know, 35 pips from this potential entry level. So that'll take a little while to get down. It's not going to go straight down there. It's going to, you know, work its way sideways a little bit up and down and, and everything else in between. So uh, that's the idea on the Canadian dollar. And Australian dollar. I don't know where my Aussie uh, tab went to. One second, guys. Sorry. I was there a minute ago. There it is. No, that's Aussie... And Z D. There we go. Okay. So again, uh, we're seeing a pretty big weakness on part of the Australian dollar. Um, so much so that uh, it's actually a little bit surprising uh, that the U.S. dollar wouldn't be, uh, uh, if we do see some weakness on the U.S. dollar, that it wouldn't be kicking in and starting to prop this thing up here. Uh, but so far, we have not seen that yet. Again, all that rate announcement news is coming out tomorrow. And uh, so I'm kind of thinking if they do want to push this thing higher, um, this would be a nice area for a potential uh, target in the long run. Again, if we do see that subsequent dive in the U.S. dollar, 75, uh, 0.7500s could easily be the target. And that's only about 350 pips away from now. Um, could be a nice opportunity. But what I want to see on the Aussie, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. So I'd like to see if price does run down, I don't want to see price go any lower than this consolidation level in here. Uh, this would be it. So we'll put a price tag on that. And this is where this is, we could see some fluctuation coming in. So 71.20 to 71.10 is sort of the line in the sand. If we lose these levels in here, then we're probably going to see much, much lower prices on the Australian dollar. And uh, we could even see these lows get run out here. So I'm not interested in seeing price go lower than that. If we do, um, it'll lend the idea that maybe the U.S. dollar could be consolidating further as we're manipulating this thing lower. But uh, if we do see a bounce in there, we could see a nice return and a nice push up, especially if we start getting higher and up into this area here and, and taking out these old swing highs here. We could see a nice uh, bull bullish momentum up to the 7,500 levels up into here. So... That's sort of what I'm going to be watching at here to see if uh, indeed it has put a low in last week. Uh, I, again, don't jump to conclusions. Don't get in long here or anything like that. Wait, watch. Um, we'll revisit this again going into London Open on Tuesday to see what price has done. If it has come down here and showing some weakness and, uh, and failure uh, to continue, unwillingness to continue lower, then we could look at getting into a short-term long position and see if price wants to run above here. If it does run, then again, we'll be looking for here and then ultimately right into here. And this is this is the sweet spot right in there. So, Okay, so that's the Forex uh, topics of discussion for the day. Now, I just want to briefly bring your attention to crude oil real quickly. Um, really trade and ugly. It, 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 it's just ugly, ugly. Look at September. Uh, came back down, slammed up, failure to go higher, came back down. Now we're just trading right. Look at this this consolidation range right in here. And we're just smack dab right in the middle of that. If I took a fib off of that, we'd be pretty close to right in the center of that right now. See right there, 50% retracement, like exactly right on it. So um, crude oil is, uh, I, I'm, I'm bullish crude oil, but I'm only bullish crude oil until price satisfies this range up here. I want to see 72.50 hit. Um, and until that um, plays out and we see what price does from there, uh, I'm kind of going to be sitting back on crude for a little bit. Uh, I do, however, like this bull push up into here, how it cleared these, came back down, retraced, came back down to the tops of these old consolidation levels here and rejected quite strongly, but I'm not very happy where it finished off the week. I was really hoping to see a further push higher and it just sort of crapped out and, and really traded softer um, Thursday and Friday of last week. So, uh, But it did see a big rejection on Friday, but here's what I am looking wanted to look at. Look at Friday's trading. Look at this. This is, this is just, I mean, press, price fluctuations for a stop run. That's, that's all this is doing. This is just um, stopping guys out. 
uh, that came run, ran it down right to the tops of these old highs here. Now, ordinarily, this would be a fairly bullish pattern right here if price did that jam down. But I would have expected further continuation of the upside, and they really fell off and didn't do anything. So um, here's the thing on crude oil. If price doesn't come down any lower than right about here, and I'm going to put a price tag on that, 68, we'll call it 68.50. We'll give it a little bit of room. 68.50. That's the line in the sand for me. I'm looking for higher prices on crude oil, but if price comes lower than 68.50, it's not going to happen. More than likely, we're going to come under here and start to swing underneath, underneath these lows right here and, uh, and and see about, you know, taking the stops under there first, I guess, before it wants to go up. Uh, but if this 68.50 level holds, then we'll be looking. So basically, I wouldn't be looking for this low to get run out anytime soon. If it does, just a quick brief touch to it and then a, a strong push and rejection off of it. And then we'll look for that 74 level to get here. That's sorry, that 72.50 level to get hit. Uh, but for right now, I'm just going to sit on the sidelines for crude oil until price sort of uh, materializes a, a little bit and, and it develops a bit more of a uh, direction on what it wants to do. Um, but like I say, right now, it's a little bit ugly, right? We're just still trapped in this very, very tight consolidation range in here. Briefly left it here, briefly left it here. And so far, we're right back in the ring. So this could keep happening for the next little while too. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on politically with crude oil and everything else, and it always gets uh, a lot of turmoil when, when that stuff happens, you know, tariffs and everything else. So um, just keep that in mind if you are a crude trader. Uh, keep your uh, movements small, your targets, uh, you know, within range, and don't be shooting for, for big, big ranges yet. Um, so that's it. That's all. I'll be back Tuesday morning, uh, London Open. Dave will be back Wednesday morning, New York Open. And um, I'll be back again for Thursday, uh, back to regular scheduled trading again. Uh, last week, was uh, I was actually out on the road a little bit, so I apologize. I didn't get um, all my sessions in last week, but this week um, will not be the case. It'll be uh, uh, full speed ahead as usual. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please post them up uh, via Telegram or um, you know Twitter or, or where have, wherever you um, you can comment on this video too. Let us know how we're doing. Uh, just click right down here on the um, logo down here and uh, subscribe to our channel. So.